afternoon. Welcome to Keys News. Good evening and welcome to the annual University of Salford presidential election debate. Hello and welcome to Real Talk, live from the University of Salford's Media City UK campus. Hello and welcome to this very special edition of the debate. Hello and welcome to this episode of Keys Sessions. Hello, uh, it's the start of Varsity 2019, the fourth Varsity event between the University of Salford and the University of Chester. A lot of side to side passing play. Looking for a bit more, looking for a bit more ingenuity and try and find little gaps. And it's cut out by Chester. And they keep the ball. Is it well defended by Salford? Number seven. Again, really good feet from him. And here's number 10. Trying to get it back up inside. Salford defend it well. Can they get us back on the way? They can. So as a panel, we all have a heart and a broken heart. We're going to be shown a couple of celeb relationships and we need to decide whether it's love or a hot mess. Just to note, we haven't seen any of these couples, so it should be really interesting. Final one. Oh, I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> me! Oh, it was you! It was Ariana Grande. It was Alex and them looking at me. Alex and Achilles. I don't know. Oh, I mean, you guys look really cute. I don't know, know. Really oh, I don't know you guys' like, personalities enough to. Oh, you guys look cute <laughs> together, though. <laughs> 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 Oh, wow. Thank you. Wow. Help me, remind me again what you're here for. So pissed, you can't even find where your keys are. buildings that are on our campus so going okay if the CLV want to continue that relationship how can we put a policy into the university to say look if you're going to continue working with CLV that are going to resource and staff our accommodation what do we want as students and having that conversation and getting that feedback from current students from second years from third years from postgraduates that only live there for one year as well as international students I think that's a big thing and asking about what do students actually want and need in accommodation not just how much will you are you willing to pay Salford Crescent is a small, calm station. Despite large passenger numbers, the station remains tranquil, even at peak times. But this does not last for long, however, as is proven by this relic of the 1980s as it thunders its way into the platform. Currently watching the badminton, but get themselves prepped for the game later. Well, you're not playing, are you? No, I'm not playing. I'm just here to support. Panel, do we want Gem to find love? And do we want us to find it with Arge or someone better? What do we think? Of course she should find love. We suffered a world banking crisis, but it's interesting that her Chancellor was at Deutsche Bank handing out derivatives at the very same time, and I wonder if she has a view on that. Vice right Chancellor? Well, I don't know what the Chancellor was doing at the time, but all I can say is that you left us in debt. We have to clear that mess up after all those years. And it wasn't a world uh, banking crisis. Well, it wasn't just Did a bank here. It was a deficit, 168 billion pounds, which you left with us, that we have to clear up. <laughs> if we start, after if all we get stuck years. talking about the past, we may get mm. stuck here forever. We go now to Annie, who is down at Albert Park at the women's football. So, how's it going down there, Annie? And we're here in Salford on this sunny afternoon, where Salford are currently playing Chester in the varsity fixture. I'm currently here with, if you want to come in, I'm currently here with em Emily, the Salford coach. Yeah. How's it going today? How have you found the game so far? It, it can't be going bad, we're currently falling up, um, but our best side out. <laughs> Traffic lights and then somebody says the name, they don't know when to go on. <laughs> what? <laughs> what is going on? Do not Social media also went wild when people started to compare themselves in a visualisation exercise. So when you visualise an apple in your head, which one, with, which one are you from a scale of one, which is seeing the whole apple in 3D, to five, not seeing anything at all? So what do you think? Close your eyes now. 
How <laughs> vicious? <laughs> <laughs> I can see an apple, but I wouldn't say it's 3D. I can see a fat, like, green apple. Here we go. So how will you guarantee that you will fulfil the role of the SU president, Hattie? So, um, I've already fulfilled some roles in the SU. I've been school rep. I have been disabled students officer. I've been on four society committees, including a society chair. So I've proved I can fulfil roles. But for the SU president, at the end of the day, this SU has changed my life. I was going to drop out of university in first year and I decided not to because I was so integrated in a society and I didn't want to lose that friendship. Gone into a transition arrangement that allows all those sharp edges to be smoothed out and gives a period of time or in which, in which to negotiate. In no deal. In which, but, it, but it's not going to result <laughs> but, in but no it deal. Could. It's all gone wrong You feel empowered when the smell is gone How is the shower going to end your problem? Get in the shower if it's all gone wrong Get in the shower if it's all gone wrong Get in the shower if it's all gone wrong It's all gone wrong for me to show people who were living with the consequences of big political decisions rather than the people who made the decisions. But the main thing I wanted to do was tell the story from more than one national perspective, so not just the story of England or Britain in the war, but there's a German family, there's a Polish family, there's an American family, and as the series goes on, expand beyond that base because I think it's important that we remember that this was a, a war of international cooperation to defeat Nazism and I think that you know is a lesson we should never forget. Of a mother who tragically lost her son to suicide and now she wants to get the message out that it's okay to talk. It was taken just before he got stuck in hospital over Christmas. This is the first time his mum Pam has had the courage to talk about the loss of her son. He used to say he didn't want to be here and the conversations we used to have and I used to say to him, promise me, promise me you will not do I won't, Mum, I won't, Mum. But he did. With Anthony, I would say he'd gone too far. He was, there was no coming back for Anthony. He thought, he genuinely thought that we would all be better off without him because all he said, as he said, I only ever bring pain to you. And I said, but I'd rather you bring pain Thing, you not bring anything. Yeah. If I can stop one person from doing what Anthony did, even if it's just going to the doctors and getting help, if I can stop one person from doing it and destroying the mum and dad's lives, or the sisters, or the brothers, or their own children, then that's why I want to do it, yeah. to raise awareness. That's all from us this week on Keys News. We've spoke about a lot, haven't we? So join us next week with a whole new panel and for some more hot tea. Thanks for joining us and see you next time. That's all from us. We'll see you next year. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.